Okay, now I'm going to show you a tune I've had a lot of requests for called Sakai. There's a couple of interesting things here about this tune before we get started. Uh, Don only recorded this once with Red Smiley uh, in the 50s. And it's unusual because it's, it's one of his best tunes, I think. And he recorded a lot of his tunes two or three times, but never recorded this again. And that's really strange because it's a great tune. And uh, the second unusual thing about it is there's no single string or brushwork in the original version that Don recorded. Um, which goes to show you there's a lot more to Reno style than just single string or brushwork. Uh, Don puts a lot of his unique rolls and uh, chord progressions in this tune. And it really doesn't need single string or brushwork to be great. Um, but it has a lot of potential to uh, improvise on this tune, and you can add single string and brushwork to it, which is why I, I wish he had it recorded it later in his career to see what else he could do with it and incorporate some of his unique techniques in it. Um, so let's get started here. It's in the key of G, of course, um, and we're going to start up here on your 12th fret, uh, and you want to bar the second and first strings across the 12th fret, but you want to grab this 14th fret uh, with your pinky or your ring finger um, on the first string. It's kind of a partial E chord, but we're, we're playing in G, but uh, it's your first and second strings, uh, 12th fret on the second string, and the 14th fret on the first string. So, And what we're going to do is we're going to roll forward on the 5th, 2nd, and 1st. So and then come back and hit the first string on the 12th fret. So I'm taking off my ring finger. All right. Then I'm gonna hit the second string on the 12th fret. We're still barring that down pretty much. And then hit the second string on the 12th fret and slide back to the eighth fret. We're sliding back from this G to this G, your D position G. So. That's what you want to hear when you do that. Okay, what we're doing is we're getting our fingers over here in this partial G or partial D position G. So, all right. Once you get to that eighth fret on the second string and get into this partial D uh, G position. So, we're in that position. We're going to reach over here and grab the 11th fret on the second string and roll forward again. All right. All right, what I'm doing is I'm just rolling forward. This is, this position is kind of like Sally Gooden or any of this down the road type uh, break. that stuff. I'm, I'm just grabbing that 11th fret on the second string. Or it's that same position everybody knows. So just rolling forward on the 5th, 2nd, and 1st. Back to that 8th fret on the second string to this ninth fret on the 3rd string. And we're kind of ending up in an E minor. end up on that ninth fret on the third string. Then we're going to hit the seventh fret on your third string and then go into your A chord. So sounds like this. Right into your F position A and we're going to do the Dixie breakdown roll which is uh, you're probably familiar with. It's forward and then back with the index on the second string. So And then go to your D chord here um, at the top of your neck and you're going to do the same Dixie breakdown roll but you're going to hold your, your D chord down and you're just going to hammer on the 4th fret when you're rolling forward. So your 4th string and then hammer, roll forward on your 2nd and 1st strings and then back with the index on the 2nd string. And then your G. 
So it sounds like this. Okay. Um, I've seen a lot of people do different variations of this, and uh, I'm sure Don did too later in later in his career, but um, a lot of people will go to this D7th here instead of here. They'll go uh, A, D7th. This is your barred uh, D7th position that you're, it's based out of your barred D. That's all it is. So you could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, okay. And then to your G. But on the original record, Don doesn't play that D seventh, which is is kind of unusual because that seems like a natural thing for him to do. Um, is go from that A, D seventh, then G. So you do either one. It's up to you. All right. Another thing too is when I'm hitting this E minor, so. This, this E note on your third string. Uh, Don is coming to the seventh fret like I showed you on the third string after that. He's walking down to it. Now you could go walk into the A up from the fifth fret to the A. So So that wouldn't be wrong. It doesn't sound bad, and a lot of people do that. You could do uh, any number of combinations there. But on the original recording, Don does not do this D7. He goes up here to your D chord. Hammer on that fourth fret. All right, so... So that's the little intro uh, that he does. All right. And that's the same thing he does during the middle of the break, which we'll get into. It's the same thing, and that's the same lick that he ends it with. Um, very unique idea. Um, really ear-catching uh, little kickoff. Um, it really makes the whole song. Um, but once we get out of this D, we're going to go... And then we're going to slide into your fourth fret on the third string. All right. And then we're going to go into a B chord, a B seventh. Um, now, I've seen some people just do the D. Uh, it's Well, it's like a D chord, but it's actually a B. Um, a lot of people just fret the uh, second fret on the second string and the fourth fret on the fourth string and roll on the third, or roll on the fourth, third, and first strings. Um, this is sort of like a, a B seventh, but it's not quite right. What I do is I grab the first fret on the first string and add that to those positions. So you're, you're at your D, uh, your second fret on your second string no, your second fret on your third string is part of that same D shape that I just did. But I'm grabbing the first string, so I'm getting my hand position like this to get this chord. It makes it more of a natural B7 chord. Okay, and I believe that's what Don's doing. Now, he may be leaving that first string open, but it's hard to tell. But this sounds more like a natural B7 chord. Now, you could grab your Bard's B7, but I don't think that's what he's doing there. It doesn't sound right. So, you could do that either way. However you want to do it, you can go... Now you could hit that second string open if you want to, because the B chord is going to harmonize with the B string. But it really shouldn't have that D 
D note in it. See, that sounds more of a D chord to me than it does a B chord. Goes to C. So what I like to do... So do it either way, however you want to do it. It wouldn't be wrong. I th I'm sure Don played it either way. I, I'm, I think Don Wayne just uses the straight uh, D shape without the first fret. I like the first fret because, like I said, it sounds more like of a, a real B7 chord. All right, so when we go into your C chord, um, out of the B. Alright, we're just hammering on that second fret out of your C chord. Leave the first string open. Don uses this C chord all the time. So. And then we're going to slide into that same D chord that I showed you, which she was using for a B chord. So. Okay. It's pretty simple. Um. D string open. All right. Follow up with that little tag lick. That's something Don does a lot. Hits the fifth string first and rolls forward. All right. And here's a, a quirky little thing that Don does uh, right after that. This is a lot of people don't do this, and this it's really strange. Um, he's actually single stringing where most people would hammer on Don is single stringing that he hits the A he doesn't hammer on he's coming down with the thumb so it's a kind of a choppy sound there it's it's not a hammer on like see how that sounds it's really strange. I, I don't know why he did that. Uh, he used to do that quite a bit back in the early days and kind of phased out of doing that later on in his career, but it's kind of tricky to do, but it is different, and uh, it's very, very unique for Don to do that. Um, so, but he did do that on the original cut. So let me play that. And he goes right back into it. Alright. Now I've pointed this out in, in other videos. Don loves to use this little uh, tag lick after he does things. After he comes out of a passage. So... That little roll right there. He does that a lot, and once you notice it, you'll hear it in all of his songs. Okay? At this point, we're going to go into uh, the second half of this tune, and it goes to a D seventh. So, we're going to slide up from the fifth fret on your second string. Or you can slide into it or just hit it. I like to slide into it. Fifth fret on your second string to your fourth fret to your third fret. So, and then do your D seventh position like this. Roll forward. All right. All right. You've probably.
probably learned this little lick. This is Don's variation on Earl Scruggs' uh, lick. He, he does this differently. It's really difficult and strange to get it right. I've taught that in other videos. I, I won't spend a whole lot of time on it, but that's what he does when he comes out of your D7. Back to your D. Up here, this is where the song, everybody stops and Don keeps playing. Um, he's sliding up to your G, uh, it's your partial G, uh, D position G up here at the seventh fret. So he's using your seventh fret on your third string and the eighth fret on your second string. Leave the first string open hold it down with your middle finger and your pointer finger and we're gonna walk backwards um, we're doing the Dixie breakdown roll slide into it and walk backwards on the third string from your ninth to your eighth to your seventh so you get this alright that's that Dixie breakdown roll one two three and back with the index so Back to your D7. To your G chord, we're going to slide into the fourth string on the third, uh, or sorry, your fourth fret on the third string. So. And then we're going to go into this little walk down that Don always does. Uh, he's playing a minor chord against your G chord to walk you into the C chord so now Don uh, pinched these he didn't brush them but you could brush them all right you could pinch these all three of these it just gives it a little different tone um, and it's up to you however you want to do it so all right now we're going to get into these fast chord changes here um, and it's interesting Don did this differently every time just about uh, in this recording um, and he doesn't do what most people do when they play it nowadays um, most people go straight through okay which he does do that one time um, but all the other times he mixes it up so the first time around he's gonna slide up to your C chord doing that Dixie breakdown roll again we're doing it on the fourth second and first string so all right stay there and do it on the third second and first string so okay but you want to slide into it all right then we're going to slide up to your uh, F position G chord same thing Dixie breakdown roll on the fourth, second, and first strings. Your E chord, F position. A chord, F position. And back to your D chord that we did earlier, hammering on the fourth fret. All right. So, um, that's a lot to take in here. I need to go back and play that for you. Um, Let's start with, uh, I'll try to play it from the beginning um, so you can see how it's supposed to sound. Um. Get the basic idea. Uh... 
Okay, so the second break that Don takes here is pretty much like the first with just a few minor changes. And um, so we're just going to start out just like we did on the first break. <laughs> stop here on this second uh, D7 instead of sliding up to that little walk down we're gonna put this uh, intro lick in here uh, instead so do this D7 the last D7 here before the the stop back to your D7 so just slide right up into that. Same thing as the first. So the only real change in the second break uh, up to this point is adding that intro lick. So that same walk down to your C. Now this time around we're going to do a C on your 5th fret on all three strings, um, your 3rd, 2nd, and 1st strings. And we're going to do the Dixie Breakdown Roll uh, through that C. Then your D, uh, C 7th. So C. C 7th. Alright. G. E. A and then D. We're not really doing a D chord, we're just going to hit those notes into your G. So You could, after you hit the C to C seventh, you could roll open on your third, second, and first strings with the Dixie breakdown roll. Um, it would be perfectly fine to do that. See, before I go to the E, I'm just rolling forward on the third, second, and first strings. So. And I'm rolling on the fourth, second, and first when I go to your E. Dixie breakdown roll, keep it forward and then back with the index. Then A on your third, second, and first. All right, and then your D. Like I said, you can either do the G open or do the, the F shape G, which I like the F shape G better because it gives it more of a, a solid, I don't know, a powerful sound, so. Now, uh, that's the way Don did it on the original record, but you could really do anything you want with that. As long as you're doing that chord progression, you could go to G, up to this E, A, or D here. Um, you just do whatever you want, but that was the way he did it on the record was... It wouldn't be wrong, whatever you do, as long as you're following that chord progression. Go to this E, this A, this D, so... That sounds good too, like I said, you, you just do whatever you want to there, but that was the way he did it on the record originally was... Okay, so this third break that Don does is uh, not much different than the first and the second, uh, just a few little minor changes. And uh, we're going to start from the, the B part, or the bridge. Um, the first part of it's pretty much the same, so we'll just start from the B part. Um, 
and this is where the real changes are that Don does anyway. Uh, so we're going to start from that D7. Now instead of going to that G lick that we've been doing, we're going to do the, the same walk down that we did during the stop in the first break. So. So that's pretty much the only change there is that he he just does that little walk down twice um, instead of you know uh, doing the or okay so that's a, just a neat little change that he does there he just does that little walk down twice and I want to show you that real good too uh, I'm not sure if I showed it to you good enough the first time. He's sliding into this partial G chord, I think, that I showed you. It's a D-shaped G, and we're just leaving the first string open. And it's kind of tricky to do. Uh, you do that Dixie breakdown roll, and I'm grabbing the ninth fret on the third string to your eighth fret. I'm moving this finger up to grab that, and then back to your seventh fret. So Dixie breakdown roll on your third, second, and first. So slide into it. So I'm sliding that finger up to your 8th fret. Alright. It's kind of tricky to do. I'm trying to keep my finger out of the way so you can see. Alright. Anyway, and that's the walk down. And then, so when it gets to your final... Um, C, uh, the the whole chord progression thing, C, G, E, A, at the end. Um, so, same little walk down uh, in your G. We're going to go uh, C, C seventh. And this time we're going to slide up to your D shaped G, to your D shaped E, to your F shaped A on your third and second strings. And then your D. Same D we used before. Hammer on that fourth fret. So. Everybody stops and then he ends it with the same lick uh, that he started it with. And that's pretty much it uh, for Saka. Um, like I said, don't stick to what I'm showing you here, just to what I'm showing you, or just to what Don did on the record. Um, there's a lot of room for improvising on this. Add single string to it, add brush work to it. Um, but those are the basics uh, to Sakai, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a holler.